absolutely crucial, and uh, transforming. I don't think still pictures could have done. They, they had some impact, but it was seeing it moving. And remember that in 1963-64, television news was still enough of a novelty, and color was just just beginning to, came in a bit later. But uh, the, in 63, the network shows had gone to half an hour, and um, they were required viewing. Uh, I mean, something like 90% of American households, uh, TV households, were watching one of the three network news shows. And there were always hugely important events at that time. The um, television sets, sales of television sets, was rising enormously. Television was just becoming the kind of um, uh, utility in the household. Uh, at the time. So watching television news was an exciting and almost obligatory as well as entertaining thing to do. And then the um, uh, Martin Luther King and company totally understood as well as Kennedy's did the impact of um, television. And uh, the staging of various demonstrations and things was certainly done with an eye on the television cameras. And the Kennedys tried to tone that down, and that's well documented now. Bobby Kennedy is Attorney General and the President trying to damp that down so that it didn't, um, uh, didn't explode. And then, of course, there were characters like Bull Connor in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, the police chief in Birmingham, Alabama, who just played marvelously into the television scenario. I mean, um, we couldn't have asked for liberal America, and everybody was, uh, virtually everybody, except white Southern resistors, was liberal at that time on civil rights. Uh, and Bull Connor uh, personified in a wonderfully ugly and, uh, and um, kind of, uh, um, prehistoric way, the, uh, the, the figure of the resistant South. And uh, the fact that he would allow dogs to uh, attack peaceful black demonstrators and bring water hoses to wash young girls and boys, high school kids, off the streets uh, was, um, was just played into a, a visual which the country could not ignore. I think those images, you know, a year or so before, a year and a half before Selma, Alabama, those images made a lot of otherwise indifferent uh, Northerners say, oh my God, if we're doing that, there's something wrong and we have to do something about it. Kennedy's tried to damp it down, uh, including the March on Washington. Um, and. Um, which, they was, were, which was a television event. Which was a television really, event, yeah. and uh, a very <laughs> successful television event, but the Kennedys feared that it was going to explode, that there would be riots, and, uh, and um, I was at the White House that day during the March on Washington <clears throat> in the old press room there, and uh, watching it on television, and uh, like everyone, amazed as it unfolded so impressively and so peacefully, and there was such evidence of interracial good feeling because as many of the marchers were white as black, and, uh, and everybody together, and then the very stirring uh, speeches, particularly by Martin Luther King, and we kept saying to ourselves, my God, Kennedy can just sit there and not do, any do anything about this? I mean, uh, why isn't he over there, or why isn't he doing something? How can he be so cool about it? Well, later in the day, he did invite them in um, with only still cameras, uh, invited. He invited the black leaders in for uh, a cup of coffee and made not very much of it, still playing the whole thing down. But uh, Johnson um, was far more politically courageous in that than, um, I mean, he came from the South and he created, um, partly in the aftermath of Kennedy's assassination and whatever residual guilt there may have been, um, but uh, he really put himself on the line for the Civil Rights Bill and, um, and, and, and used his famous um, skills at political coercion behind the scenes on Capitol Hill to get 
And that, that, that's now all well documented too in the uh, in the tapes that have been published of the conversations between um, between him and various senators. <laughs>